Welcome, everyone. Hmm. I was thinking we could start today um, with a standing exercise, but if you are in an office setting or you need to stay seated for any other reason, that's totally fine too. You can do it either way. Um, so find a good place to stand and ideally get this shawl wrapped around me because it's cold in here. All right, so let's just start with a little bit of just shaking. Just moving your body however it feels good. A little shaking or bouncing. Sometimes starting with faster movement, if you if you have a lot of energy or there's some anxiety or nervousness, it can moving your body kind of at the speed of your mind can help you actually start to slow down and drop. And I have a lot of energy today. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're gonna do is something we've done many, many times before, and that's the deep belly breathing. Um, this is very good for activating the vagus nerve, the calming part of your nervous system. And so it, it can be useful for any time, uh, but especially times of higher anxiety, fear, uncertainty. Um, and it can be great to do before meditation just as a way to start to drop in and be present. So I'm going to stand sideways so you can see that as I breathe in, my belly is going to move out and there, there is a common thing called reverse breathing where it's actually going the opposite direction of that. But rather than confuse you, I'm going to show you the, the way ideally we want to do it. And that is to have the belly move that way towards this like stair type thing. All right. So I'm breathing in right now. And I'm breathing out. Actually, going to back up so it's against the white so you can see it even better. So, breathing in, breathing out. And you can see the navel moves towards the spine on the out breath. So, in and out. And I am exaggerating this a bit so that you can see it easier. I don't normally, my belly doesn't go out that much usually, but this is an exaggeration. Okay, so if you're not already trying it with me with your hand on your belly, and you can obviously face the screen, you don't need to be sideways. Um, so in breath and out breath. If this is hard and you're noticing that you're doing the reverse breathing, reverse breathing is like this. This is what we don't want to be doing. Okay, but I'm going to show you anyway. Reverse breathing is breathing in and breathing out. Reverse breathing, which is what we don't want to be doing. Breathing in, breathing out. So you can see all the air is like, I'm sucking in my belly and my lungs are expanding, but just up here. The reason we want to be doing it the other way where the hand goes out is because then we're using our diaphragm. The diaphragm is going to push. You're going to, you're going to, essentially the diaphragm is pushing down and that's what's pushing the belly outward. And the reason that activates your calming nervous system is there is this nerve called the vagus nerve that goes right through the diaphragm right through a hole in the diaphragm and so there's there's really a good scientific reason why breathing in this way actually will calm you down um okay so and if if this is confusing or you're noticing your re reverse breathing um, there are different ways that you can start to practice belly breathing. 
Um, one of the ways is by laying down. You can feel it easier, the belly rising. Um, and if you have any problems with this, it really is so important that if you have problems with it, reach out to Misty so that she can reach out to me and um, we can talk about different ideas about how to get you breathing correctly. Because if you're reverse breathing and you have anxiety, it's going to be really hard to treat the anxiety until you start to use your diaphragm to breathe correctly. And it's a long time habit for a lot of people. All right. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the arm movements and the in breath is going to be a rising of the arm movements, the arms, and then the out breath is going to be nice and slow as the hands move down the body. Okay, so it'll be in breath, belly expanding as the arms rise, and out breath belly contracting navel towards spine as hands scan down the body okay now make sure your knees are bent okay and let's just actually before we add in the arm movements just do a little bit of grounding through our feet so what i want you to do is just gently sway back and forth from one foot to the other so you're not picking up the feet you're just moving, you're, you're shifting your weight from one foot to the other, slowly. You might even close your eyes if that feels good. If it feels better to keep them open or you have balance difficulties, just keep them open. Either way, eyes open or closed, feel the weight shifting from one foot to the other. Knees bent slightly. Feeling the weight shift from one foot to the other foot. The mind wanders or is stuck in story or whatever. Just come back to the feeling of the weight in your feet. Just the simplicity of that. Good. Now check and see if you're clenching your jaw or if you're holding your face or your mouth tightly and let your jaw drop. Also see if you're bunching up your shoulders or if you're holding on to tension in your shoulders and let your shoulders drop. It might even feel good to like pull them up towards your ears and then let them drop. Belly breathing this whole time. So we're still belly breathing. Shifting the weight one foot to the next. Mouth is soft, jaw is slack. And you can stay here with your feet if you'd like, or you can come to stillness, and then we can add in the arm movements. Now, the idea, this is a Qigong move, and many of you have seen me teach it before. It's something I try to do every day. In Qigong, the belief is that this is clearing your energy field. So the idea is that as you're breathing in, you're breathing in, 
fresh energy from the universe. And as you breathe out, your hands are almost like scanning the body without thought, clearing the physical and energetic body of any stuck energy, of energy that's not yours. And then we shake the hands out. And again, in Qigong, the idea is that you're you're shaking out any of the stagnant energy or energy that's not yours. So if you're feeling stuck or stagnant or you've been around um, people you find difficult or environments you find difficult, this is this is something that I do a lot when I'm in a difficult environment. Okay. So let's put the breathing together with the arm movements. And again, you don't really need to think about anything. Um, I just like to explain in Qigong what, what this exercise is, I, is actually doing or what the belief is in Qigong. So again, you're bending your knees. You've got a nice solid base. Your, your feet are about shoulder width apart or a little bit wider, hip width apart or a little bit wider. And... Closing the eyes or resting the eyes and belly breathing in, gathering all that cleansing, purifying energy from nature, all that goodness. And then as you breathe out, hands come down that loving energy is helping you scan your body, moving any stuck or stagnant energy down through the body, down through the feet and into the earth, and then shaking it off. Again, Breathing in deeply. And again, if your breathing isn't at the same pace as mine, just follow your own breath. Breathing in, gathering up that prana or chi or love, however you look at it. And then hands moving down. You don't even need to think about it. Body energetic and physical being cleansed. Anything stuck moving down through the legs and feet and into the earth and then shaking it off your hands. One more with instruction, breathing in. And breathing out. You might visualize stuck energy moving down and out. If that works for you. And then shaking out the hands. And then the practice as I was taught it, the next step is to allow the hands to kind of float outwards and maybe some some people feel their energy field kind of where you can feel your energy bubble some people can see it some people can feel it and some people are just imagining it and any of those are okay and if this doesn't resonate at all with you that's okay too I don't see or feel energy personally, but I know people who do. So just seeing where your arms go and imagining that maybe this is your energy field, if you'd like. And then taking one hand just below the navel 
and the other hand over top of it, bending the knees and really feeling the center of gravity, this power center in your body. Breathing in to where your hands are. Shoulders soft, mouth soft. Belly breathing. Good. Now I'd like to invite you, staying inwardly focused, staying focused on your own inner experience, your own breath. If you'd like to do this energetic clearing exercise at your own pace now, I am going to be quiet for three breaths. And the only instruction would be, see if you can make the out breath nice and slow. So we're doing the same thing we just did, but now you're guiding yourself in it so that in the future, if you wanna do this on your own, you kind of have it in your memory banks. So if you'd like to do it again, we'll do the three breaths with the arms. And you'll feel your energetic field. And then you'll put your hands below your belly and you'll do three deep belly breaths. So three breaths with the hands, arms feel the energetic field, and then three breaths with hands at the belly, feeling your own power, feeling your own centeredness. And you can, you can go along with me if you'd like on the screen, but I'm gonna be silent now. So whenever you're ready, begin with your own breathing. Now moving into the position that you'd like to meditate in, whether that be sitting, standing, or lying down. Seeing if as you move, you can move really slowly. 
and seeing if you can pay attention to each of your movements. Even though I'm talking, staying as internally focused as you can. And once you're settled, checking in and trying eyes open and eyes closed. I'm just seeing which feels safer. You can always change. But seeing what feels best today. Whether it's a soft downward gaze or eyes closed. Checking in and seeing if you're still breathing into the belly. Checking in with your mouth and your jaw. Again, inviting softening. I do this many, many, many times a day where I'll check in with my mouth and jaw. Release the mouth and jaw. You may notice a yawn. It's just a sign of the body coming into some down regulation, some calming of the nervous system. Noticing your feet. And noticing your spine. If you're sitting on the ground or in a chair. Or you're standing. See if you can imagine that there's a string. At the crown of your head, so not the middle, but kind of like the back top. The string is just pulling upwards. So the chin, slightly downwards, slightly tucked, but very, very comfortably so. And the spine is upright but not rigid. And starting with your head, just scan down your body and see if there are any areas of muscular holding or rigidity that you don't necessarily need to hold yourself upright. And if there are, see if you can invite that part of your body to just soften. And maybe it's not ready to, and there's no forcing here. We're just inviting the body to release. Very normal and habitual to have areas of the body that we just habitually hold tightly. I have several. So scanning from the head, slowly down through the body to the feet, 
And just seeing if there are any of these kind of habit areas of holding or tightness. And then just gently and sweetly letting those muscles relax. And it may help to contract them first and then release them. So I'm going to be quiet for a minute or two as you scan your own body. Still belly breathing. Still allowing the exhale to release the tension in the body. Hmm. So this preparation that we've been doing, clear the energy to invite the body to soften as much as it wants to. All of this is preparation. for meditation. The meditation here today is simply paying attention on purpose, the present moment, and doing that again and again and again. 
Today we're going to talk about or we're going to meditate about working with challenging situations, especially ones that include the element of uncertainty, the element of fear or uncertainty about the future. So this could apply to many different situations. Before I go further, if this feels like too much for you today, or you're just in a place where you're like, I don't really want to work with uncertainty. I want to just be with my breath. I would invite you to trust your own intuition. And you can just mute if you want to keep sitting with us. And then you can unmute at quarter till. So if this feels like it might be useful for you, then I'd encourage you to stay and listen. But above all, trust your own inner voice, trust your own inner teacher. So as part of being human, we deal with a lot of circumstances intermittently throughout life that bring a sense of the realization that things are impermanent. Maybe you're going through an illness and you don't know the outcome. Maybe the illness is quite severe and you're facing your own mortality. So there's a lot of uncertainty. Maybe there's a loved one, somebody you really care about who's facing physical or emotional struggles. Maybe you have an aging parent or a sick child. Maybe things at work are difficult and you feel uncertain about your job or your path. And there's so many different stories and contexts that uncertainty can take. So using our meditation practice to learn how to work with uncertainty can be very useful. And yesterday I was working with a lot of uncertainty in my own life. And so that's why I'm bringing it today. Because I was very distraught in the morning. And then I decided to work with it through meditation. So what this looked like for me was actually being outside on a hike. And as I was hiking, I needed to move. There was too much anxious energy in my body to stay still. So in this moment now, if you notice that there's just too much restlessness in your body to sit still, I would encourage you to stand up and just slowly start to move. We can meditate on anything. Meditation does not mean sitting still and not moving. And there may come a point when you want to sit back down. So trust that. 
But in coping with uncertainty, the key is, and all the different teachers, all the different traditions, spiritualities, religions, mystics, they all speak to coming back to the present moment. Sounds simple, but in practice, not so much. But this is what it is. It's the practice of again and again and again coming back to now. So yesterday, as I was hiking up this mountain, my mind was full of thoughts, pretty dark thoughts. I just started out loud to name what I was noticing. So I didn't try to confine my mind. So in this moment now, let's just together for the next couple of minutes either out loud for me i was very distraught i needed i needed to hear my own voice saying things out loud so if you're in a space that you can do that and practice in that way i would i would welcome it if you're in a space where you need to not speak out loud then just name things in your own mind so this could look like i'll just give you an example of what i'm noticing right now this is like we're not necessarily focusing in on one thing. We're just naming what is moving through our consciousness. So for example, feeling my hands in my lap. Tightness in the inner thighs. Noticing I hadn't breathed in a while, taking a deep breath. Settling with the out breath. Tightness in the jaw. Dry mouth. So you get the idea. And if you try this later outside, like while you're walking, there's a lot more to name and to notice about your sensorial experience. I was noticing the breeze. Many times I was noticing sound. I was often noticing footsteps weight of my foot, foot on the ground. So if you're coping with a lot of uncertainty in your life, I would strongly encourage you to get outside and walk and use this practice of naming your experience because it can give more space. Fear is very constricting. It narrows the experience. It's like tunnel vision. Maybe you can relate. So when there's a lot of uncertainty or fear, getting outside into a bigger space with more sensory input can be helpful more of the outside natural world around you. So in this moment, see if you can just start to either inwardly or outwardly name what's moving through your consciousness. And it might be a thought. So you can just say thinking 
It might be an emotion. It might be sound, taste, body sensation. So anything in your perception, you're just noticing and naming, letting it move through until the next thing comes. And if your mind is really still today or you've been meditating for a long time, maybe there's not a lot of objects moving through. Maybe there's a lot of stillness, but there's no right or wrong way. All right, so I'm gonna be quiet now so you can be with your own experience exclusively. And we'll do this for about, we'll do this exercise for just the next two to three minutes. Just noticing. And then for this last little bit, see if you can let go of the words and just begin to be in the experience of noticing the breath or the body sensation or the thought or the emotion. So you don't have to name it anymore unless you want to. You're just being in the experience of it. So practicing in this way of continuously just coming back to whatever experience is right in front of you, right in you. The uncertainty, the fear mind, it wants to project into the future. It wants to tell a story. The mind spins. So if you're dealing with something like that, I have found one of the most useful ways to cope is to continuously come back to just my own sensorial experience. 
And if it's really spinning, to even name it out loud or inwardly. And if it's really, really spinning, to get outside, get into a bigger space and start naming what is in the present moment just right now. Again and again, practicing this breath, this moment is really all we have. And when we're in scary situations or there's there's a lot of uncertainty, the mind wants to figure out what's going to happen in the future. And, you know, of course, we all know that those are stories. We really don't know what's going to happen. The only way we can find peace in situations like this is just right now. It's the only way. Only way to find peace or acceptance is just to keep coming back to the now and then to realize that we're human and it's not going to be perfect and the mind will spin out, especially in difficult circumstances. So let's complete the meditation together, either inwardly or outwardly. Three ohms. Feel the vibration of the ohm in your body. This can be another way to really be in the present moment with yourself just right now. Feel the vibration. Breathing in. May the fruits of our practice today spread outwards in all directions and help to end the suffering of all beings everywhere. Mm, about each one of you for coming and being present and perhaps learning to work with your own way of being with uncertainty the impermanence, the, the truth, the truth of the way it is to be human. <laughs> and sometimes it's more in our face than others. You know, sometimes life shows us that we really don't know. And it's always that way, but sometimes it's more apparent. <laughs> yeah, we can't avoid the difficult times, can we? But we can, you know, what occurred to me yesterday is like, I have no control over this situation, none. And all I can do is the only thing I have control over is how I work with this. That is literally the only thing. So, and I think for me, it also helps 
to just know that I'm not alone because I feel like when there's real difficulty, there's this way the human brain can feel separate and by alone and, and like nobody, nobody's going through something this difficult or nobody understands or so I, I hope that this community is at least one support for each one of you to come here and know that, that you're not alone. And I, I know online is different than in person. Um, but we're all human and we're all going through our stuff. And I hope that you can feel the love of what we're co-creating or at least imagine it. I'm seeing all the hearts. I'm hearting back to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm.